let's talk about the first design pattern, which is the Observer. Alright, my friends, back in chilling once more, and in this video, we're talking about design patterns, namely the Observer. So highest level overview, first and foremost, what even is a design pattern? A design pattern is a sort of a way to organize classes in a predictable way, and they will then go after a specific function. So I have three design patterns planned to show you, and the Observer is basically one of the ones that's used for events. Now, events are a huge thing in Minecraft modding. I anticipate them to be a huge thing in Hightail modding as well, because they're just an easy way to extend functionality to certain systems. So what does that mean? Well, you're gonna, you're gonna, hopefully you've watched the Lambda lecture, because we're about to make a functional interface, and it's gonna be fr pretty freaking cool. So let's start off by thinking the following. Let's say we have a sheep and we're shearing that sheep. And every time that the shear sheep method is called, we are going to output or have an event that basically anyone who wants to know about this, every observer of this event gets notified. Ah, that's where the name comes from. Let's start by, first of all, making a sheep, making a player, and then making the player be able to shear that sheep, and then we'll continue. So let's first of all start with the new class player over here. We're then going to also make the sheep class over here, and then just for the sake of argument, I'm already going to make the interface, and that's going to be the interface on sheep sheared event. And we're going to make this an interface over here. There we go. All right, so that's, those are going to be the three classes, basically, that we're going to need. The player in this case, we're going to do very, very simple. Just a public string name over here, then a public player with a string name. And of course, this.name equals name. Absolutely no worries. And finally, we're going to also do a public void just so that we have something to call here on the player with the damage player method, which is going to be an S out name and then say was hurt, right? So nothing too crazy, very simple player class as per usual. All of the code is available to you down below as well. So that's going to be okay. Next up, the sheep. Here we're going to make a boolean. A public boolean has wool. And then we're going to make a public string name because why not? Sheep can have names. And then we're going to have a public sheep over here. It's going to be sheep, which is going to have a string name parameter. And that's then going to be this.name equals name. And then this dot has wool is just equal to true. Basically, every sheep that we're going to create always has wool. And then we want to have a public void method that we can shear the sheep. What do we need for this? Well, we need the player right here, right? The player, bam. And then we're going to say, hey, if the, um, if let's say has wool is false, then we're going to simply return, but we're also going to output this. So we're going to say sheep, and then we say name has no more wool. Boom, right? So that's fine. However, if it has wool, then we can continue and we can then say this dot has wool is equal to false. And finally, well, we want to notify an event. How do we do that? Well, we got to think about this. We, we want to basically be able to add functionality as if we were to write a method right here, a custom method, and that gets then sort of pulled. How would that work? Well, let's think about the interface. Well, an interface, we can define one certain method, right? And if we define that method, then we could use this as a functional interface and now everything goes crazy. So what does that mean? Well, we can say void on sheep sheared, right? This is going to be the method. And now we want to think about what could be the individual things that we might want to have sort of appear in there. Well, maybe we want to specify the sheep that was just sheared as well as the player that just sheared the sheep. So that's going to be our sort of definition of our event in this case, right? So the event definition is we're going to get a sheep, we're going to get a player, and that's awesome. So every time that our sheep gets sheared, we could hook into this, right? We could observe this and the observer, whoever that is, like the sheep doesn't care about the observer and the player doesn't care about the observer. But every time we have a new observer, they will get both the sheep that was sheared and the player that just sheared that sheep. Say that three times in a row. So that's a big one. And for the sheep itself, what we can now do is we could, for example, make a public static list of on sheep sheared event. We're going to call these the sheared events equal to a new array list. So this is just a static list in this case. And how do we add to this? Well, we'll see this in just a second. But let's first of all call the event on this. How would we do that? We're going to make a private void right here. I'm going to call this the notify event method with a player player because otherwise we can't actually get the player 
And how do we do this? Well, we're going to actually loop through. What? Yeah. For and then on sheep events. So for each event within our within the static sheared events list, we're simply going to say event.onSheep sheared, passing in this as in this sheep, as well as the player that we're having here. And that is totally fine because in this case, this uh, this is a sheep and this is that. So there you go. And, and finally, instead of the shear sheep method, we're going to notify event passing the player. And for every one of the observers, we're basically, they're going to get a, a call over here. And now here comes the cool thing, right? So you might say, okay, so far it's like, fine, I kind of understand this. Well, before we have any sheep and any player, right? Before, before any player and any sheep, okay? What we can do is we can simply add uh, observers over here. So we can say sheep, this is the class that sheared events, right? This is the, our list. And we're simply going to add something on here. And now the cool thing is that we can add a unsheep sheared event. But think about this. This is a functional interface. So if I now start typing in a closing parenthesis, look at, and then start typing in sheep, look at what happens. Boom. It shows over here. We can simply pass in a sheep and a player because this is a lambda expression of the functional interface. And I can just say, do the curly brackets. And for the sake of argument, we can now put in whatever we want. And here comes the cool thing. This method will then get called every time a sheep gets sheared. And we don't care about the sheep. We don't care about the player. And we can literally just say, let's say, so over here in the sheep, we know that um, we get a output when there's no wool. But let's say, actually, I also want an output if there is a wool. Okay. Sheep that name was just sheared by and then we say player.name okay so that's the first event and then let's say for the sake of argument like this is just uh, simply you know outputting sheep and player but what if we want to say sheep dot shear events dot add and then we add another sheep and player over here and then instead we actually say you know what i actually want to go crazier i want to say player dot damage player so every time every time a sheep gets sheared right the player gets hurt now you might say right you one thing you might say yeah okay that's all fine and well but why wouldn't i just do it right here i could just say player dot damage player you are correct you could theoretically do this but now this happens always and every time but what if i want to at some point no longer do this or what if this is what i've said in a previous lecture too Sometimes we don't have access to certain classes, like we can't change them, right? So for example, if we think back over here to our, um, let's say to the runnable or something like that, right? So this is a class given to us by Java. Uh, I can't change this class. This is read only. And this is going to happen in any type of modding as well, that you're not going to be able to change those classes. However, luckily, the programmers there were smart enough to, for example, use the observer pattern over here for us to use these events. So let's just make a couple of players. So let's say player Carlton draw here is it equal to a new player Carlton draw. And then we might have a couple more, maybe nano right here and maybe moon right here for the sake of argument. So that's going to be moon and that's going to be nano here and moon right here. And then we're going to have a couple of sheep. So sheep Jeb underscore, because of course, right? That makes a lot of sense. Jeb underscore and then just a couple more here. We're just going to add them. All right, so you have a couple of players and a couple of sheep. And if I wanted to now go in Jeb dot shear sheep and the Carlton is going to shear Jeb right here. And then we're going to say, let's say we do uh, Charlie and then Moon is going to shear Charlie. And finally, Luke will also be sheared here by Moon. What is going to happen? Well, we're going to get an output for each of those via the following, right? Because this sh shearing over here happens the notify event happens, thus the on sheep sheared gets called. So we're going to get an output first and then a damage player for each of those. So first, Kaupenjo uh, or Jeb was sheared by Kaupenjo, then Kaupenjo was hurt, then Charlie was sheared by Moon, then Moon was hurt, then Luke was sheared by Moon, Moon was hurt. And if we were to try to shear Luke again, it would will not work because here Luke no longer has wool. So none of those will get called because in the sheep, we have a return right here, so we're just going to bounce out of the method. So here we could then theoretically also make another list of events, call it like on sheep shear failed event. And all of a sudden, you can see this can, gets kind of powerful. So we can run this and we can see Jeb was sheared by Kaumjo, Kaumjo was hurt. 
Charlie was shared by Moon, Moon was hurt, Luke was shared by Moon, Moon was hurt, and then finally, shaped Luke no longer has any wool or has no more wool. Bada bing, bada freaking boom. Now, once again, you might say, this is kind of cool, but I still don't see the application. Like I said, imagine you were unable to change the sheep class, and all of a sudden, this is the only way to add additional functionality to certain things happening in the world. And then it gets all clear. Now, this is sort of a culmination of a couple of other things, of the, of course, functional interfaces. This doesn't have to be set up as a functional interface. It can be, but it doesn't have to be. So you can theoretically also make a new class that implements this method and all sorts of other things would work totally fine. But in this case, it's actually kind of neat that it also uses a functional interface. So you can uh, just have a an example of this too. I Listen, I'm telling you, this is pretty freaking cool. Okay, so this is the first of our three sort of design patterns that I want to show you. I will link way, way, way more stuff down below uh, on the observer pattern on different design patterns because there are tons of design patterns, some of which are completely... I, I think they're stupid in my opinion. Some of them, I, I really don't like the factory pattern, okay? That's just a personal preference, though, because um, it's also often used in a um, in a context where you have... What is it? It's, it's like a, a context of very corporate-type code, which is often a little bit stupidly done. Regardless of that, though, the observer pattern, definitely really interesting, basically a way to design events that you can then add certain things to it. So let's say, for example, just for the sake of argument, I'm going to go one more cr crazy thing over here. Let's say I'm going to make a new event happen only after Charlie has shared Moon. And we're going to say this is now going to be the S out. And I'm going to say um, wool, so much wool, just for the sake of argument. It doesn't even matter. Now, this is going to happen one time over here. And you will find, there you go, this has now only happened after this because we didn't have added before, right? Here, we added the events before we even had a player or a sheep. Like, the, the system didn't even know that sheeps or players existed, which is totally fine. And then here, I added it at this time. So this timing also plays a role. But yeah, it's pretty freaking cool. Really neat. Uh, like I said, got a bunch of stuff linked down below, as well as the code, of course. So you got all of that as well. But that's going to be it for this video right here. I genuinely hope you found this useful and you learned something new. I'll see you all in the next video. So, yeah.